Hey, this is YBR, and I'm putting this on video so I can't back down from the promise I'm about to make. I'm going to make a video for every single game that is exclusively released on the Xbox Series X and Series S consoles. Why have I decided to do this? Well, really, it all goes back to Gran Turismo. Yes, it is Gran Turismo's fault that I've decided to do this. You're probably wondering, how in the world is that the case? So, let me give you some background. As a youngin, I absolutely love Gran Turismo's 1 through 4. They are classics to me. I have really fond memories of me playing that game. And in the original 2, I would try to do a license test and I would keep failing. I'd be like, Daddy, Daddy, help me! And he'd help me get past the license test. And it's just such great memories from those games. But I never really got to play 5 or 6 because I didn't have a PlayStation 3 when those games were actually alive. But I did have a PlayStation 4 when Gran Turismo Sport was released. So I got Sport, and I knew it was not a mainline Gran Turismo game. I knew it was going to be different, but I thought I would still enjoy it. But honestly, I just could not get into it. It just didn't have the charm that I remember from the previous games. But I really feel like the charm is coming back in Gran Turismo 7, which was announced to the PlayStation 5. Because in Gran Turismo 7, you got the things that I love. Like, you got the used car dealership, you got the car washes and the oil changes. At least I think they will. And I know it sounds dumb. Like, those are the things you care about? Yeah! Yeah, really. I don't know why, but it's just the most zen and calming experience. You go through a used car dealership. You're looking through like a hundred different cars. Like, doo, 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 doo. Oh, look at that car. That car looks cool. You buy it out and then you go and take it to the car wash, clean it all up, give it some fresh oil. And then you see how it drives. I just love doing stuff like that. Just taking ordinary cars and trying them out like that. But that was something that just wasn't present in sport. Like a lot of things like that, which really gave the game character, weren't there. It was just more of a this is a game where you race kind of deal. So that's why I'm so excited for Gran Turismo 7, because I think that one's going to bring back the love I had for the series. So I'm like, okay, I got to get a PlayStation 5. But somehow, I completely missed the window to do that. Like, they announced, oh, here's when pre-orders are going to happen. And then the pre-orders happened, and then all of them sold out. And then I read the news that here's when pre-orders are going to happen. Well, it was too late for me to buy one. So I said, okay, I got to make sure when the Xbox Series X goes for pre-order that I actually get one and I don't miss on it, too. So I paid attention to the news and I said, okay, it's coming out on this day. And two hours before the pre-orders opened, I'm at the website already refreshing the page, ready to go. And I got it without much problem, actually. But then I started thinking, well, wait, why did I buy a Series X already? Because I don't need one yet. Like, I make videos for video games. I'm sure eventually there's going to be a game that's only on the Series X that requires me to buy it. So I don't really regret the purchase. But I'm really wondering, should I have spent $500 on just a handful of games? Probably not. So we're going full sunk cost fallacy on this thing and saying, okay, I'm going to spend more money on video games so I feel like I didn't waste my money. Because if I play every single game that I can play on the Series X like that, I feel like I really got my money's worth. So that's why I've decided to do it. Now when I say exclusive, I mean exclusive actually. If it's on the Xbox Series X and the Xbox One, well that's not exclusive. It's on two different consoles. Yeah, they're both Microsoft, but the point is I could get the same gameplay experience pretty much with worse graphics on the previous console so the purchase wasn't necessary. If it's on the Xbox and the PC, which is something that really annoys me, I see it all the time where it's like, this game is exclusive to the Xbox and PC. That's not exclusive at all, if you ask me. If a game is on just the Xbox and the PlayStation, that's more exclusive than a game that's on the PC and the Xbox, because the PC is a much more open platform. You can use any hardware you want to play that game, assuming it's strong enough. With the Xbox and the PlayStation, you have to buy that specific hardware. I don't know. It just always annoys me when you see something like that. So I have to make sure I specify. I mean, it's on the Series X and nothing else. So as of release date, today, November 10th, there are zero games exclusively on the Xbox Series X. I'm not going to buy just the games that are exclusively on it, mind you. I'm going to make other videos as well. But I'm just making the promise that I'm going to also make videos for all the games that are exclusive because I think it'd be something interesting to do. And, well, frankly, there's nothing else that I could do that's interesting about the console because before I even got it, there were already videos of people disassembling them and all that kind of stuff, which is something I would have wanted to do, but there's really no point since it's already been done. Anyways, that's all for this video. Nice short video. So until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how many exclusive games are released on the Series X. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Also, since we're here, you know, go click on a card for the next video, or here's a fun story. I don't know where Gran Turismo 3 is, so I put Gran Tour Racing in there in its place. And Gran Tour Racing is a really interesting game, because it's presented by Car and Driver, just like the first Need for Speed was presented by Road and Track, right? 
except this one only had one game and then it was dead. It also had the most interesting way to put cheats into a game ever, because you'd hit the button to the rhythm of a song, so you'd be like, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, and happy birthday was actually one of them. And if you clicked it right, you would unlock the cars. Really neat game. Never seen any sort of cheat system like that since or before. Anyways, see you guys.